I think it's beyond understanding. Yeah, I mean, I don't know because everybody would ask me this question like there's such an age gap and uh, you know, what do you talk about? <laughs> you connect at a deeper level than your conscious understanding. Absolutely. That's what I think. And now Ankita and I have been together almost nine years and it's, it's wonderful. Great. We uh, don't question it. <laughs> <laughs> What is this bond? <laughs> He's one of the first names that pops up when we think of fitness. He's an Iron Man and an inspiration for fitness for many these days. He's none other than Milan Soman. Tell us about Fight Lazy. What is the run about? So this was a concept that was uh, created by this association that I have with this company called Lifelong. Lifelong is a company that makes um, home gyms, amongst other things. And they wanted to, like everybody else today, spread awareness about the fact that it's important to take care of your health, it's important to be fit, just to enjoy life. It's not that you want to take part in competitions or win the Olympics. It's just if you want to in enjoy your life to the fullest, mm -hmm. you have to have a certain level of fitness. Right. You have to be able to, able to move comfortably, easily with your own body weight and so on. And what is the biggest impediment when we discussed all of this and uh, you know, we, we realized that the biggest thing is, of course people have so many excuses, but where does it all come from, is that a part of you is always saying no, hmm. not today or it's too difficult or I can't do it or you know, you're just lazy, you right. don't want to try, you don't want to make that effort, even the minimum effort, like when I tell people how much I exercise, you know, I ask them how much do you think I exercise. They say you must be exercising 2-3 hours a day. I said no, I exercise 15 to 20 minutes in a day, but every day. Right. And I have got to that level where I can do only that much because I've been doing it for many, many years. So the important thing is to fight this feeling that you can't do it or don't want to do it or, or you don't have time to do it or whatever it is every day and do a little bit every day. You don't have to do a lot. You don't have to spend hours in the gym. You don't have to use complicated equipment. You just have to fight that thing inside you, that voice inside you that keeps saying no. That is your lazy voice. So, when, I, when we did the campaign, it was like there were two selves of me. My lazy self, which is part of me, and also the part of me that wants to do something good for myself. And everybody wants to do good for themselves, right? Correct. Everybody thinks, no, I wish I was, I could be better, I wish I could be better, but, but I don't have time or this or that. So, there's always that conflict. So fight lazy, the campaign came out of that, that you will feel lazy, it's natural to be lazy, everybody is lazy, including Milan Soman, but you have to fight it every day. Correct. And so fight lazy, that concept came out of that, that whatever happens, every day you have to get up and do at least a little bit for Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. So the campaign came out of that, obviously it was a digital campaign, and now uh, I think it's been almost two years that I've been associated with Lifelong. They said, you know, is there something that we can do on the ground? Okay. So this, I think, is an interesting concept. I personally have organized a lot of running events. I'm an event manager. I've been an event manager for more than 30 years now. Most people don't know. They think I'm a model <laughs> and actor and so on. But uh, I love organizing events. And uh, when they uh, came to me with, uh, with this, like, what can we do? Uh, can we do a run? I said, you know, why don't we do a little bit more mm. than a run? I mean, you're all about... Um, home gym and increasing your strength in different aspects by doing different things um, and, and they said okay so what can we do I said we'll create a series of games okay. that have to do with basic strengths that people should have like squats hmm. you know there are basic movements that you must be able to do comfortably if like I said you want to live your life um, um, in, a, in a fun way so squatting hmm. you know just sitting up sitting and standing up on the ground doing push-ups so that is a push movement the squat movement and the pull movement, so pull-ups. Okay. Okay. You know, so anything that you can do without equipment or the minimal equipment is that we'll create a, a series of games like that. So they like the idea, they say let's do that. And it, it is important that you don't do just one thing. You know, when you want to get fit or even you want to get healthy, you have a set of a variety of movements, hmm. not just one. Like if you're just running, then like I know as a runner, you will get stiff, you will get rigid and you know, just into that movement. So you have to stretch. All right. You have to make sure that your muscles don't get tight because you're only running. So therefore yoga, uh, pilates, um, any other variations in exercises, they become very, very important. Correct. So the whole concept here is one, 
fight lazy, do something every day. Number two, find a movement or series of movements that you enjoy so that you don't get bored. So that okay. you don't say, no, no, not this. I don't like this. Find the series that you like and do the things that you don't like at different times. Mm. Like today I feel better. Let me try one movement I don't like. You know, okay. Because even that's going to help you. Okay. So even if you do one minute of each exercise, even that is a great place to start. Right. Uh, how did you get into fitness? I mean, we all know that you started off with modeling, but how was how was your fitness journey? Yeah. Started if so you could brief us. the thing is that I didn't start off with modeling. I mean, I started off with modeling. Um, that's what most people know. Right. But my public life actually started with competitive swimming. Okay. So I started competitive swimming at the age of nine. Okay. You know, I was swimming at the national level at the age of nine. I got my first national medal at the age of nine. So that was a great incentive. You start, you win something. And you want to continue. Right? Right. You say, oh, this is great. And you, you, you get the recognition, you get the admiration, and you get you know, all of that. And as a child, obviously, obviously, you love it. I mean, even grown-ups love it. You get a model, <laughs> medal, yeah, this is my medal. So um, I, I, I was swimming at the national level for 13 or 14 years. I was national champion. Right. I was a national record holder in my event. And till the age of 23, so I built up a really solid foundation. Now that I look back, of not only fitness but discipline right the also the understanding what fitness really means to me not just physical fitness but also mental fitness how you begin to think you know your how you respond to situations mm. mentally mm. emotionally you know how do you keep that balance so sports to me taught me all those things while i was growing up so i had a great foundation in physical fitness mental fitness just overall understanding of life what I wanted uh, to do, what was important to me, priorities, mm. all those things became very clear to me in that journey till just the time I was 23 and Correct. I started modeling at 23. Correct. So I was also in a, in, a, in a place where I could look at it, even the whole business of modeling from a different perspective. You know, I didn't get, I think I didn't get carried away by it. And a lot of people ask me, how have you maintained all of that till today? I think that the whole thing is perspective. Okay. That you see it for what it is, really. You know, people ask me today, how do you respond to trolling? Okay. You know? And I, I know that, you know, those people, they don't know who I am. Correct. They just, it's their perspective, their opinion of something that they're imagining. Mm. It's not even real. So why would I care? True that. I don't even care. Sometimes I just think it's funny. <laughs> and like I was telling you a little bit earlier, you know, more and more people are getting more aware of what's happening in, in the world today. Millions of people today are joining social media every day. Absolutely. And maybe they're in small towns, maybe they're in villages. They've not seen more than that. So when they see it on the net, they're shocked and they don't know how to respond. True. And they respond in maybe out of fear uh, or out of shock. And you know, it's something negative. But as they get used to it, then they say, oh, this is normal. You know? right. Like looking at somebody naked, if you've not seen it before, you'll be shocked. After some time, you're like, okay, it's a naked person, it's fine. True, mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a few exercises? You said you, you just work out around 15 minutes a day. Yeah. That's enough according yeah. to you. What are the ones that you've been doing constantly? Could you tell us a few recommendations? Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, there are three very, very basic movements, which is one is squatting, so sitting on the ground and getting up, one is pushing and one is pulling. So these three exercises, I, I definitely do every day, which, but just a minute of each. Right. If I have more time, I do more. So I do one set of pull-ups on a pull-up bar mm. or one set of push-ups and I do one set of squats. I mean, people will think that that's crazy <laughs> because everybody has this idea that you need to do a lot. But the fact is, <clears throat> whatever exercise you choose, it has to be chosen for a particular purpose. Okay. Why are you exercising? So obviously, a lot of people exercise because they've neglected themselves maybe in the last 15, 20 years. They put on a lot of weight. Now they want to lose that weight. Mm -hmm. That is their first priority. That is the reason they start to exercise. But there are certain people then who want to exercise because they want to take up a certain challenge. You want to do Ironman or you want to run a marathon. So depending on what your goal is, you will decide on what exercise is best suited for that. Correct. But after having chosen that, the most important thing is regularity and consistency. Even if you don't do better every day, but you just consistently and regularly do it. Like sometimes I might say, I'm really not feeling, maybe I didn't sleep well the previous night. Maybe I did a lot the previous day. I was so busy or it was too hot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm not feeling as energetic as I was the other day. I might do a little less. 
instead of doing 20 pull-ups in a set, I might do 15. It's yeah. okay, but I still did 15, you know, which is great. So that is what my learning has been for myself. And I think that works, that could work for a lot of people as well. Just right. don't think that, you know, I can't do that much, so I won't do anything. Start small, start with one minute, start with two minutes, start with whatever you can. It's not like however busy you may be in your life, that you don't have one minute Correct. for yourself you know, or two minutes. I mean, that's what you've got to start with. So the first thing is to, to decide, I want to be fit or I want to be healthy. Um, I want to do something for myself and then figure out what it is that you would enjoy doing. Choose that to start with. Correct. It could be running, could be walking, could be yoga, could be uh, breathing, pranayam, you know, could be anything. Surya Namaskar, the most fantastic uh, general body, full body exercise that we have and it's like India's gift to the world, I think. Correct. Even start with something like that. And even to perfect a Surya Namaskar might take you months. But that, that journey of perfecting a Surya Namaskar itself will raise your health and fitness levels mm. to... That is true. Yeah. That is true. Uh, but like you, like you mentioned, you know, a lot of people have joined social media. They're seeing their, they're on the journey yes. for weight loss and stuff and all. Uh, when, when someone starts with a weight loss, mm. what are the initial uh, exercises that you would suggest? Well, the thing is about weight is it puts a lot of pressure on your joints. Correct. Obviously, your joints. And now there's a different um, aspect if you have been overweight since childhood mm -hmm. or you have suddenly gained weight. There's a difference. Correct. Because if you've been overweight since childhood or a certain weight or a certain uh, shape since childhood, then your joints might be conditioned for that. Okay. But if you suddenly, and most people suddenly put on weight just in four or five years, you know, you, you, you leave college, you just get a job, you're busy, you know, really focused on your work, you neglect your body completely and because you have no time. <laughs> and suddenly you realize, oh, in the last five years, I put on 15 kilos. That weight may not be good for your joints, even your back, your, your uh, upper, your neck, your mm. knees, your ankles. Um, you don't realize it immediately, but after a few years, there could be some deterioration. So the first thing is to understand that when you are carrying weight that you don't want, then you have to very, very gradually try to lose it. Okay. Very slowly with, with exercises that are low impact. Okay. So you can start walking first. Don't start running immediately. Don't start jumping. Start walking. The other thing is, like I said, Surya Namaskar, if you can uh, bend down, touch your toes or try at least to bend down and touch your toes, that is a good start. Just sitting on the ground and getting mm. up mm. without you know, support. using support. Even if you, you are not able to do it without support, do it with support. But get onto the ground slowly and then just get off the ground. Even just getting onto the ground and getting up off the ground is a great exercise to start with. Okay. It's a very gentle very gradual exercise because if you see even the Surya Namaskar is basically getting onto the ground and getting up again but a lot of different movements on the way, on the way. to stretch different muscles right and it, it improve your circulation to different areas of the body so that is a very complex way of getting onto the ground and getting up right but you start with just simple how, how would you do it you know hold on to a table hold on to a chair most people cannot get onto the ground True. Because we are so used to sitting on chairs and sleeping on beds, we just don't get onto the ground. True. So that is the first thing I would say. Get onto the ground, lie down, maybe even roll a few times and then get up. True. And do that four or five times or as many times as you like. Right. Uh, you, I mean, your fitness journey is very popular. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, is there anything that you particularly find difficult? What is tough for Milan Zoman? Waking up early. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people... I mean, and the, I, I believe it's true uh, that waking up early is very good for health, mental health, emotional health, physical health. I, feel, I believe it's the best time to exercise as well. Uh, even uh, um, in terms of uh, just efficiency, you know, you have so many things to do the rest of the day. So you finish this kind of stuff, your exercise and taking care of your body and your grooming and all of that before. But I find it very difficult to wake up early. Okay. Very, very difficult. So I believe also that it's if you, nobody has all good habits, right? So you have good habits and bad habits. You just try to improve your good habits, get more and more good habits, while reducing your bad habits. Okay. So as long as you have more good habits and less bad habits, I think you're on a good track. Right. Uh, how do you, you also mentioned that, you know, mental fitness is also very important. Yeah. How do you keep your mental fitness in check? So it's not uh, one thing that, 
can improve anything. You know, we, we keep thinking like, okay, what do I do? Maybe I'll take this pill. Hmm. So there's no pill. There's no magic pill. The thing is to, like I said, have more good habits than bad habits. So even when you introspect with yourself and say, what are my habits? These things are bad for me. I know it's general knowledge. These things are good for me. Hmm. Now let me see how I can improve these good things, do more with the good things and try to do less with the bad things. Try. That's all I need to do. So first is awareness that I need to do something. Then is understanding what do I need to do and then discipline on actually doing it. Correct. That's all. And the whole thing is introspection. Think about it for yourself. Nobody can tell you this and nobody needs to tell you this. You know it. Right? The same way I know that waking up early is better for me. But I'm saying, okay, not that important. I'm doing so many other things that are good for me. Hmm. Maybe I can allow myself to wake up late. That is my own understanding for myself. Correct. So everybody needs to, the first step in uh, fitness, mental fitness, emotional well-being, physical fitness is awareness. Then understanding, then discipline. Right? All right. Uh, you've been in the industry for almost 35 years. Yeah. Uh, could you probably uh, brief up the journey for us? 35 years is not a, it's not a small time. I, I, I yes, definitely. And, and I can't remember all of it. But <laughs> um, well, it's been fascinating, of course, because um, I've always been interested in doing different things. Hmm. I mean, that is why I took up events. The first uh, company that I started was an event company, I think in 1989. And uh, that was wonderful. At that time, uh, you know, there weren't many event companies. You know, now there are thousands and lakhs. Then there weren't, weren't that many, maybe a few. You could count them on your hands in the whole country. And, uh, you know, organizing events. So uh, I started with that and I'm still doing it. Um, after, immediately I started modeling. In fact, I got interested in, in events also because I started uh, fashion shows, being a model in fashion shows. I was quite interested in how fashion shows were put together as an event. And then I started uh, you know, doing it myself. And then uh, the same thing happened with um, uh, television. I got offers to act almost immediately in 89 or 1989. I said, no, no, no. I took up one which was Joji Tawai Sekandar, okay. it didn't work out. And then I didn't do films till 2000, right? 11 years later. So in the interim, a lot of people came to me and they said, why don't you do movies? Why don't you act? You know, you, people love you, which is always nice to hear. <laughs> but I was always like, no, 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 I, I don't think so. Even modeling to me happened by chance. I didn't even know that modeling was a profession oh, okay. that people got paid. I mean, I didn't think of it. Obviously, everybody gets paid to do stuff, but I, I didn't think of it. You know? And somebody came to me and offered me money to take some pictures. And I said, okay, that's interesting. Uh, 50,000 rupees for like <laughs> two hours of work and it's not even work you're just standing in a corner and I was like this is crazy you know I mean who can say no to that so I started that's how I started modeling and then I started learning about you know how to be a better model myself I mean there was nobody to ask hmm. um, and then I started uh, television because finally somebody came to me and said that my biggest excuse at that time because I don't want to do films or anything else because it's all in Hindi mm. and uh, I don't speak Hindi very well. Uh, I still don't. Okay. It, I'm better but I don't speak it really well. Uh, and um, also Marathi. I'm, I'm fluent and I can communicate very well but it's not like I can you know, create a character or something like that. So I said, I kept saying no, I can't speak Hindi, I don't want to. And then finally uh, this uh, uh, series was produced, A Mouthful of Sky in English right. for Doordarshan and they came to me and they said now what about this this is in English you can't say no and I said okay it's in English I, I can do it it won't be difficult um, let me try and I tried it and it was fun it was a lot of fun I really <laughs> enjoyed uh, working in that series and I said okay this is great maybe I can do some more of this stuff right you know and I was already tired of modeling, there was nothing new, no new designers, new photographers, new styling, new ideas. You know, those six, seven years, I, I feel I had been through most of it. Correct. And I didn't see really great new things happening. I had also modeled abroad in, in Europe, in London, and the kind of work I saw there was like, why isn't it happening in India? Correct. 
So I said, okay, maybe it's time to, to move on. And I started doing television. I started my own production house. I produced my first Hindi serial uh, called uh, uh, Margarita with this partner of mine, Parvati Balagopal, and beautiful series, she directed it. And it was in Hindi, of course. <laughs> and I really enjoyed that as well. So we started doing a lot, of more, lot more work. And then five years later, I did a film uh, called Tarkeeb. So it was very gradual. I believe that if you just keep doing stuff, doors keep opening. Correct. You know, and again, it's, it's up to you to, to see the opportunity uh, through those doors. And if it interests you, you should do it. So I've, I've always been interested by, by different things. And uh, I also believe that opportunities come to, to everyone, but mostly we don't see them. True. You know, so it's also important to keep your eyes, eyes open to, to see what opportunities might be out there. Because the reason we don't see them is also a lot of our conditioning. You know, what we've taught that this is something you should do, this is something you shouldn't do. So sometimes we don't even see those things mm. that because we've been conditioned because you shouldn't do. Like for example, if I, I had not taken up the modeling offer thinking, no, this is not good because all four of my grandparents were doctors. Mm. My father was a scientist with Baba Atomic Research uh, Center. My mother is a biochemist. And so I said, I have no connection with media or glamour or fashion. And it, it, I don't think it's correct for me. I was studying to be an engineer. Mm. If I had said at that time, no, I, 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 I don't want to do this. It's important to try out different things, new things, and, and see how you feel about it. Because trying out things just helps you to grow and have a bigger True. life. True. Yeah. Uh, you know, we cannot not talk about Made in India. Yeah. Uh, did you ever think at that point of time in your career, it would be such a big hit and you would get such a good popularity no. out of it? No, <laughs> of course not. Because, um, so that was 1995, right? I stopped modeling. I, I just mentioned I got into television. And um, Alicia uh, called me, I think, uh, and or somebody called me, maybe Alicia, and said, you know, I, I'm doing this song. Oh, no, it was Alicia, because I mm. did a music video for her before Made in India, but it was an English song. Okay. And it was quite experimental because uh, the concept of music videos was, was new at that time. We only saw some type of music video on Doordarshan before that, you know, mm. that was not, it was not a thing. But this became because of uh, music channels and so on, which were just coming into the country, that uh, the singers should have music videos. So uh, I did one and it was, it was sweet. Then she came back and said, this is a Hindi song and <laughs> it's called Made in India. And I was like, yeah, okay. And uh, <clears throat> um, it's going to be like this and like that and I'm a princess and so on and you come out of the box. I'm saying that sounds really tacky, <laughs> but okay. I, I, I was a fan of Alicia, of course. I mean, everybody was and is. So I said, of course, I'll do it. And most importantly, the song was uh, composed by Bidu. You know? So I was a big fan of Bidu. Uh, a lot of people I don't know hadn't, haven't heard today who Bidu is. And he's a great, great musician. So I, I said yes. And uh, I went onto the set and Ken Ghosh was the director. And I looked at the set and I said, oh my God, this is really, you know, models or maybe just me at that time had this thing about, you know, oh, we are really stylish and we are really glamorous, even though I was not at all and I'm still not. But it's like, that was also one of the reasons for not doing films that, you know, I'm a model, I don't do films. Mm. And who wants to do films? Like Hindi films? No way. <laughs> and uh, I remember there was one friend of mine who was a model and he, he did a movie and people were like, and the other guys were like, oh my God, you're doing a movie? <laughs> but that's changed now, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very different. So people don't have those kind of uh, ideas. Mentality. Mentalities. But even though I felt like that, I still liked uh, to experiment. So I went on to the Made in India set and I said, okay, now, even though, and even today it happens to me, I go on to a set and I say, oh, what is this? But now I have to do my best, you know, that's it. So professionalism is, is a big thing. True. That whatever is happening around you, you have to do what you can do the best to make it better, whatever it is you can do. It's okay. I mean, nothing is ever going to be perfect. Right? You're never going to be pleased with everything. Mm. So you have to do your best. That's all you can do. So I, I did that and then the song came out and it was a big hit. I mean, it was such a big hit that I could not uh, for, for some time go out in public anymore. Okay. It was crazy and that was the first time I had ever experienced something like that. Like even as a model, there was a lot of uh, admiration and recognition and all of that. But Made in India just bumped it up. 
you know, I walked into a, a club once in, in Pune and uh, I just walked into the door. I was with a friend of mine who was studying in the US and he'd just come back after four or five years. And uh, so he had known me from before and we walked into this club and every single person in the club started screaming. <laughs> and we just had to run away from there. It was crazy. So it was, it was huge. It's crazy. Yeah. And those days, social media was also not there. Nothing. But just today, like one channel or two channels. Right. Yeah. And but, radio, of course. But today, after 27 years, from yeah. 26, 27, 27 years, years yeah. Shringar is up. And, yeah, Shringar. Uh, uh, you're back in the music video. So tell us about that. How was the experience <laughs> now? So um, it's a little bit different because I heard the song and I liked it. And um, I said, this is nice. I, I hadn't heard of Nagin. Uh, before that, I hadn't heard Asta or uh, Akasa singing. I hadn't heard Raftar. Um, I hadn't heard any of that. And but I, I asked my wife. I said, "Have you heard Nagin? The song Nagin?" Because I checked on on YouTube and it had some 350 million Correct. views. And I said, "Wow, this was how come I didn't? How come I didn't hear this?" And I asked my wife, and she said, "Oh, it's huge. This song is uh, it's amazing. It's really nice." So then I I made her listen to the new song mm -hmm. Shringar. And she loved it. She said, oh, this is even better than, uh, than Nagin. So I said, okay, that's interesting. Then I, was, I, I made my mother listen to it. And she said, oh, this is it's nice. It's, it's got a nice beat. She said, what are you doing in it? I said, they want me to be in the video. And she's like, for what? You're so old. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know, but they want me to be there and um, it'll be fun. So then I, I went and shot for it and it was fun. I mean, Asta and Nakasa, Raftar, they were all there, and Vayu. And uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we just shot for one day, I think. Correct. And um, it was great. I mean, I, again, I had a lot of ideas. Oh, maybe I should be doing this. Can I have a mohawk? Can I just, maybe in half the video, maybe I'm in a tuxedo. And the video, uh, the director, Puneet, he was like, okay, he didn't do this. He said, no, no, don't worry. It's going to be fantastic, you know. How directors are. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you're going to look amazing and oh my god, you're fantastic. You're f and just, you know, they make you feel really good. That's and I said, okay, so let's do it. And then we have the video. True. That's nice. True. Uh, oh, one thing I must tell you. Yes. So he came up with this thing, Puneet, some, some kind of oil. Okay. Which, that was the most fun thing that I thought and I've never seen it before. And he said, just uh, put this oil on your hands and rub it. And he, he said, it's, it's a magic, well, some chemical, I don't know. So I rubbed it and smoke started coming out. Oh. Have you seen that? No. Oh, you watched the video. <laughs> then I put it all over my body. <laughs> I was like rubbing it on my body and you know, the smoke coming out of my body. It's an amazing effect. I've never seen it before. I thought it was, it was fantastic. That is nice. Yeah, fun. Have you, have you consciously stayed away from Bollywood? Uh, no, no, no. I don't stay away from anything. I mean, I still, I model, uh, I can, I do whatever people want me to do and I think it's interesting, I do it. Uh, with Bollywood, it's been, or films, I, I won't say just Bollywood. If the, if the, if the uh, project is interesting for mm -hmm. me, I do it. That's, that's about it. So I don't get a lot of interesting offers. Okay. I say, if I like the script, I say, okay, it's nice. Then who's the director? Then who's the other, who are the other actors? Who's the producer? How are you going to do it? I ask, I think, too many questions sometimes. Uh, how much are you paying me? <laughs> and then um, if everything kind of falls into place, I do it. So you're and also... So, so it, it really reduces the amount of work chance. that I do. Yeah. <laughs> so are you also o open to OTD these days? Yeah. So that's what happened. So this uh, Balaji came to me hmm. and uh, offered me uh, this series called Porashpur. And uh, when they came to me the first time, so Porashpur, it's a, it's, a, it's a mythical, a fictitious city set in some time period that we don't know about, medieval kind of thing, Middle Ages. And um, there's a king and, you know, like that, it's a kingdom. So I, they wanted me to play the king. Mm. So I said, no. I mean, why would I play king? It's just so boring. I read about the king and I said, no, 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 not king. And then they came back and they said, okay, now they developed it a little more, showed it to me. I said, but I don't want to play the king. Then I said, okay, please read it. It's because now we've developed the character and all of that. I read it. Then I saw another character, which was a smaller character of a eunuch. I said, who's this person? They said, this is a eunuch and you know, he's like this and he does that. And, and I was like, oh, why can't I do that? They said, you want to do that? You don't want to play the king? 
I said, no, I don't want to play the king. I want to play this. So they said, uh, okay. They thought about it. Then actually they got quite excited. They said, yeah, fantastic. So then I played the character called Boris. Correct. In, in Porushpur. And again, I had a great time. It was, it was great fun. And I, I got a lot of uh, appreciation for it as well. Absolutely. And Anupa, uh, Anu Kapoor played the king and he was much better than I would have been, <laughs> definitely. Uh, but uh, Boris was great fun. Great. How do you think has entertainment changed over the years? So, entertainment has to change with the tastes of, of people, right? And again, it's not just one thing. Hmm. When the culture changes, the entire culture, and that has to do with what people are studying, what are job opportunities, it has to do with politics, it has to do with world politics, it has to do with so many things, uh, social issues, you know, so all of that kind of changes what people see entertainment as. So now, uh, actually there are so many uh, issues, you know, that need to be spoken about. Earlier there was much less of everything, mm. because again, the media was smaller. You know, we didn't have social media, we didn't have that many uh, publications, that much radio, that much. It was much smaller. So, uh, even the access to media was restricted. You know, a lot of people couldn't get into it before the internet. Mm. Now, with the internet, people see things that are happening across the world, in different cultures, different languages, different setups. And then their expectations or their likes change. Hmm. They know they like different things. It's like if you look at America and you look at uh, action movies, you know, it's not just action movies. In action movies, who is the action? Which action do you like? Do you like Arnold Schwarzenegger action? Do you like Sylvester Stallone action? Do you like Van Damme action? Do you like Jackie Chan action? Which action? So the, each of those is big, you know. So your choices just become so much. It's not, it's not a big mass thing anymore. It's very difficult to be a mass thing. Hmm. Like if you see uh, the new film, Top Gun Maverick. I mean, for, for a movie to achieve that takes a lot of, I don't even know whether it was just luck, <laughs> but a lot of thought and understanding and, and of, of what people are going through in, in the world True. and what are they looking for, really. Because entertainment is that. You're looking for some kind of escape, but there has to be levels in mm. it, a deeper meaning, there has to be a message, there has to be something that you can hold on to, not just laugh and cry, and some, some, something that touches you inside as a person. So that has become more difficult to reach today because right. people have changed a lot in their awareness True. of the world. True. Yeah. Um, a couple. So people, I mean, sorry, no. but people are wondering, you know, oh, why did this Hindi movie not do well? The South Indian <laughs> movies are doing well. This, and they don't understand why Hindi movies are not doing well. <laughs> because maybe they're really not doing that kind of research to understand the public anymore. True, probably. You know, maybe they're seeing it from a, a point of view that is irrelevant now. You know, that's it. Probably. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe your bond if you had to in probably a <laughs> uh, few words yeah. with your wife? What is your bond? Uh, <clears throat> it's, I think it's beyond understanding. Yeah, I mean, I don't know because everybody would ask me this question, like there's such an age gap and, uh, you know, what do you talk about? <laughs> but, I, you know, I've heard this all my life because uh, somehow uh, between all uh, my girlfriends and I, there's always been a gap that has been increasing over the years. Okay. Strangely. Like Madhu Sapre was the first girlfriend I had who was younger than me. And she was about six years younger than me. Then my okay. next girlfriend was 10 years younger. Then the next girlfriend was 12 years younger. Then my, it just went on and on, and now Ankita is 26 years younger. So I've always had this question, like this person's 10 years younger than you, what do you talk about? This girl 15 years younger, what do you talk about? I said, <clears throat> it's not that talking is not important, but the thing is you connect it, I think, at an emotional level, which is even beyond articulation. True. You know? So you understand each other as people, which is more than your beliefs, it's more than your awareness, it's more than what you, what you talk about. It's beyond that. That's what I feel, that when two people connect, you connect at a deeper level than your conscious understanding. Absolutely. That's what I think. And now Ankita and I have been together almost nine years and it's, it's wonderful. Great. We uh, don't question it. <laughs> 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 what is this bond? <laughs> yeah. But how do you guys support each other? What is, I mean, how important is she with, when it comes With to everything. You? So the most important thing in a relationship is supporting each other in what you want to do with your life. 
Like if she doesn't like what I do, just because I like doing it, she doesn't have to do it herself. Mm. Like suppose I'm, I, I love to run and she didn't like to run, but she understands the fact that I love to do it and allows me to do it and, and, it, and supports me in doing it, that's enough. The fact that she also likes it, she runs with me, is a bonus. Okay. You know, now if she likes something, now she's studying yoga and she's studying other stuff, and I'm not doing it, but I will make sure that I do everything I can so that she can achieve what she wants. Correct. Yeah, that's very important in any relationship. You have to do whatever you can to make sure the other person can achieve what they want. Correct. Uh, you, you both are on social media these days and yeah. as we speak of social media, we also have to see the negative side of it. Yes. You know, and uh, unfortunately, there have been a lot of uh, uh, trolls or negative comments as yes. such yes. that we have seen. Uh, yeah. How do you deal with it? How do you two deal with it actually? Well, on the one hand, I think trolls don't exist. Okay. You know, they, I think it's fiction. Uh, I see, because there's so many bots today. Like True. today, I mean, I've been talking to people about deep fake and things. And you know, you, you don't even know whether what you're seeing or reading or hearing is even real anymore. Even if you're seeing it with your eyes, is this actually true? And so many times it's not. Correct. So this person writing this comment on my page, does that person even exist? Is this a person? I don't know. And if I don't know that, why would I care? True. Somebody wrote something that is not complimentary. But a thousand other people wrote things that are complimentary. So I choose to go with the good stuff. But uh, uh, being her or you as a couple, it doesn't affect you at all? It did affect her initially, but then she saw my response to it. And now she's, she's much, much better. Because it, it started uh, with the, the, the time people realized that we were in a relationship, mm -hmm. which is I think a couple of years before we got married, which is now about six, uh, six, six years ago. And um, there was some misunderstanding created by the media. Hmm. Um, they saw us together at some fashion week. Uh, somebody took a picture, they put it in the paper, and we were just holding hands and walking around the venue. And they said Milan with uh, his girlfriend at SS18. This is 2018, hmm. spring, summer, 2018. And everybody thought that she was 18. Yeah, because it says SS18. That was the most silly thing. So they were like, oh what? She's 18? How old is he? He's like... <laughs> so we were like, oh my God, really? Then, we, then they started speculating that if she's 18 now, because in some interview I said we've been seeing each other for 4-5 years, which means she was 14? <laughs> was she 14? When they started seeing each other? How? So there was a big... Not that we participated in that debate or discussion, but it was just there. We were reading one and laughing about it. And uh, then the other time was, and it went on for quite some time. The other time was when we got married, the day before we got married, and we didn't announce it that we we're getting married or anything like that. Uh, just coincidentally, there was a report in the paper and carried by all the biggest publications, because everybody carries everything nowadays, is that uh, Ankita has left Milan because she won a lottery <laughs> and she has moved to um, some foreign country, I don't know where. And we're reading and we're getting married the next day. And so she was a little upset about that because it, you know, already you're so emotional, you're going to get married and so on. And I was like, it's okay, don't forget about it. Why are you even reading it? Reading it? And, but I called up the publications, mm. the big ones. And I said, you know, why have you done this? And they said, oh, we don't know. It's just picked up. You know how things, it's just picked up and people publish everything. But they removed it. A lot of the people removed it. They said that we can't um, do anything about it because it's out there, mm. you know. So that's a big thing that it's already out there. We're just publishing what's out there. That is a new thing. Nobody needs to say it. Nobody needs to do it. Nobody knows who said it, but it's out there. Sources and True. you know, True. blah. So, but a lot of people, uh, a lot of the publications removed it. So it was okay, but nothing else you can do about it. And it was actually started. So that's the thing. It was started by um, um, a company that was running casinos because it was about a lottery and not even based in India. Okay. So it was part of their marketing that they were doing these little, uh, you know, controversial stories. Okay. I mean, that's how marketing <laughs> has now changed in, in current years. So fake news is a big thing, which you True. also know. And using fake news to, to market something is also a thing uh, today. So a lot of that. True. True. I mean, so then you really have to be um, smart, you know, with your own emotions and say, what am I going to care about? And what am I not going to care about? Because it's just going to affect you 
otherwise. True. Because it's it's if somebody's trying to market something and they're using your name for it, what can you do? I mean, they're using it all the time. You know, some show, reality show is happening. Bill and Soman is going to be in the show. Is he going to be there? Creating a hype. A hype. You know, and they're doing it with all uh, famous people. What do you do? That's their thing. They're not saying you're going to be there. They're asking people, are you going? What can you do? True so that. you don't pay attention to it. You, you can't. And it's going to get worse than that. Much worse. All right. Okay. Uh, coming back to Fight Lazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you have to say? What is that one message that you probably have for the current generation? How can they find Are you it? the current generation? Uh, I would say yes. So I would say to you, <laughs> give yourself one minute every day. Start with that one minute. Choose an exercise that you think is simple, like push up or squats mm. or something like that. Do it for a minute. See how you feel. Because the moment you start exercising, you begin to change. Your body changes, your mind changes. Don't choose goals that are difficult. Choose goals mm -hmm. that are easy. You did 10 squats today. Tomorrow do 11. Next week do 12. Don't say, oh, I'm going to do 100. Right. I'm going to do 500. No, start with 10. Do 11. Do 12. It's better than nothing. True. Right? Yeah, that's it. Great. Uh, that brings us to the end of the interview. Thank you so much, Milan, for your time. And Thanks it was a lovely lot. talking to you. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you.